so I welcome you all here to another uh, session of the Residence Corner module. Uh, these sessions are arranged by the Department of Research at Dakar National Hospital. Uh, today we'll be discussing the anatomy of orbit. Dr. Zuhaib is a uh, first year resident at Dakar National Hospital. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the expert panelists today. Uh, Dr. Mohsen Kadir uh, is an associate professor at, G at GMDC and consultant neurosurgeon at National Medical Institute. He was my chief resident when I started neurosurgery and had great influence over my training as a neurosurgeon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you, sir. Okay, sir, it started. It's starting so, from... Dr. Dr. Zureb, please tell everybody that you to you to mute yourself. Uh, and you, uh, because there's an echo and you can start your presentation. Sure, sir. Sir, starting from orbit. So coming to the uh, orbit introduction, the orbit is a complexly organized group of neural, vascular, muscular, ligamentous, and os uh, osseous structures that open onto the face and the external world to collect and provide binocular visual information to the brain. The globe is surrounded precisely by a coordinated group of muscles encased in fat to allow free movement of the globe and muscles, but limit at, limited at the extremes by ligamental structures to prevent excessive mobility. Nearly all bones forming the anterior and middle cranial base contribute to the formation of orbital wall. Moving on to next. So here's the bony structure. So it's the anterior view of right orbit. The walls or, of orbit are formed by the seven bones. These are frontal, zygomatic, uh, sphenoid, lacrimal, ethmoidal, and palatine bones, and the maxilla. The lateral border of the orbital opening is formed by the frontal process of the zygoma, as shown here, while the upper part, the lower margin of orbital uh, opening is formed laterally by zygoma and medially by uh, maxilla which is shown here, laterally by zygoma and medially by uh, maxilla. The upper part of medial bar mortar is formed by the frontal bone and lower part is formed by the frontal process of maxilla. So here is the upper part forming the uh, medial end, that's the frontal bone, while the uh, lower part maxilla forming the uh, lower medial end. The superior orbital fissure is bounded by the uh, the medial part of the upper border contains the frontal sinus, while the uh, superior orbital fissure is bounded by the lesser wing of sphenoid below the greater wing and medially by the sphenoid board. So here's the superior orbital fissure bounded by the lesser wing of the sphenoid wing below and the greater wing above, uh, below the greater wing and lesser wing above while medially by the sphenoid bone. The frontal bone forms the narrow apex of superior orbital fissure. The inferior orbital fissure is bounded posteriorly by, uh, posteriorly by the greater sphenoid wing and anteriorly by the maxilla. So here is the inferior uh, orbital fissure bounded anteriorly by the uh, maxilla, while superiorly by the greater wing of sphenoid. The supraorbital margin is not or is the site of one of the several small uh, formula that transmits the supraorbital nerves and vessels. The infraorbital group infraorbital group transmits uh, transmits the infraorbital branch of maxillary nerve that leads forward into out of the orbit inferior orbital fissure to cross the floor and to reach the inferior orbital canal which ends in the infraorbital foramen. So moving on to the anterior aspect of right uh, superior medial corner, uh, anterior aspect of right optic canal. The optic canal which transmits here, moving on to the diagram B, the optic canal that transmits the optic nerve, optic artery opens into the superior medial corner of orbital apex. The optic canal is situated at the junction of lesser wing with the sphenoid bone. It is separated from the superior orbital fissure 
by optic strut. So here is the optic strut uh, separating the optic canal from the orbit superior uh, superior orbital fissure. The optic strut is also referred to as the posterior root of lesser wing. The tendinous ring referred to the annular tendon uh, from which the four rectus muscles is attached to the upper medial and uh, medial margin of optic canal. The lateral edge of annular tendon is attached to the mid portion of the lateral edge. So coming on to here, so this is the optic canal so divided by the uh, optic strut which is coming from the lesser wing of sphenoid and moving ahead so the roof of, uh, in diagram C the roof of orbit that is viewed from below the roof of orbit is formed by the orbital plate of frontal bone anteriorly and the lesser wing is phenoid wing posteriorly. So the roof that is formed by the uh, anterior, uh, anteriorly by frontal bone by the lesser wing of sphenoid posteriorly. The lacrimal fossa depression in the anterior lateral part of the roof in which lacrimal gland uh, there is another small depression on the anterior medial part. So here is the, you can see the lacrimal fossa at the frontal bone, while there is another depression uh, in the anterior medial part of the roof serves as the attachment of trochlea or the superior oblique muscle. So we, the optic foramen is situated posteriorly at the roof, junction of the roof of medial and uh, roof and the middle wall. So here's uh, so here's the optic for the anti ethmoid uh, air cells and sinoid sinus are located at along the medial edge of orbital roof. Here you can see these moid air cells along with the cribriform plate. The crystal glyce serves the uh, site of attachment for false cerebri. So in the diagram D, you can see the crystal cerebri which serves as the site for attachment of this false cerebri. The superior aspect of the floors, the superior aspect of the floor of anterior canal fossa that forms the, uh, in the diagram D, the superior aspect, it is showing the superior aspect of the floor of the anterior cr uh, cranial fossae that forms the roof of the both orbits. The cribriform plate of ethmoid bone is situated in the midline between the orbital roofs. Between the orbital roofs, the crystal gly here also, the crystal gly serve as the uh, site of attachment of false cerebri. Anteriorly, the frontal sinus splits into the two lamina that encloses the frontal sinus. So here you can see the crystal gly serving as the uh, attachment for false cerebri. Optic canal at the both end, foramen veil, while the carotid canal and greater wing of sphenoid, while above this uh, lesser wing of sphenoid. Moving on to the orbital floor is formed by the orbital orbital plate of maxilla. So here is the orbital floor forming anteriorly anteriorly formed by the maxilla, while the orbital surface of zygoma and the orbital surface of palatine bone. So here is the you can see the orbital surface of zygoma and the palatine bone. The orbital floor, which is thin, very thin, forms most of the roof of the maxillary sinus. The floor is continuous with the medial wall, except in the most anterior part where the floor is uh, 
floor is perforated by the <coughs> nasolacrimal canal. So it is the continuous along with the medial wall, but in the interior most part, there is uh, a, a canal forming the nasal, called the nasolacrimal canal. Here, as you can see here, the infraorbital groove, uh, the anterior part of floor is continuous with the lateral wall, but posteriorly the floor and the lateral wall are separated by the infra or inferior orbital fissure. So coming the anterior and the lateral wall, it is continuous except that it is in the posterior part separated from by the inferior orbital fissure. The infraorbital groove, which transmit the infraorbital branch of maxillary nerve, leads forward out of the inferior orbital fissure to cross to reach the infraorbital canal. So here's the infraorbital groove, which transmits the infraorbital branch of maxillary nerve. So another uh, diagram in which the aspect of the roof of maxillary sinus, which also inferior aspect of the roof of maxillary sinus, which also forms the floor of the orbit. The greater wing of a sunoid, uh, the greater wing of a sunoid forms much of the middle fossa and contains the term uh, and the posterior part of lateral orbital wall. The pterygoparietine fossa is located behind the maxillary sinus. Here, as you can see, the pterygopelatine fossa located behind the maxillary sinus and the maxillary nerve uh, that contains the terminal part of maxillary artery, maxillary nerve, and pterygopelatine ganglion, along with some of branches of all three structures. The pterygopelatine fossa opens through the pterygopelatine fissure. So ahead it goes into opening into the pterygo uh, maxillary fissure in the infratemporal fossa, which is located below the greater wing of sphenoid. The medial wall of pterygo palatine fossa is formed by the frontal process of maxilla. So the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa is formed by the frontal process of maxilla and the lacrimal bone. The, the orbital plate, uh, the lacrimal bone, the orbital, orbital plate of ethmoid bone and the sphenoid body. So the pterygopalatine fossa is formed by the maxillary bone orbital plate along with the is <clears throat> sphenoid body. Moving on to performance. <laughs> Okay, so intracranial aspects of the right optic canal. Is there an issue? No, no, sir. Uh, the intracranial aspect of the right optic canal. So, the intracranial uh, end of the uh, optic canal has an ovoid shape, slightly greater in the diameter in the medial lateral 
than in superior inferior direction it is situation uh, situated medial to the anterior clenoid and optic strut so as you can see anterior clenoid and the optic strut <clears throat> literally viewed as the optic canal the medial margin is formed by the sphenoid bone while the upper margin is formed by the anterior root of this lesser wing of sphenoid the lateral uh, margin is formed by the optic strut which is also referred to as the posterior root of lesser wing the lower margin of foramen is formed by the optic strut and the adjacent part of the body in the elder diagram uh, intracranial aspect of right superior orbital fissure the superior orbital fissure provides a communication between the orbit and the middle cranial fossa it is bounded above by the lesser wing as shown here above by the lesser wing and a small uh, medially by the sphenoid uh, sphenoid <coughs> body as shown here medially bounded by the sphenoid body a small portion of lateral apex of the fissure is formed by the frontal bone small portion of the lateral apex uh, apex is formed by the frontal bone as you can see it here the mid portion of lateral margin of fissure at the junction of fissure's narrow lateral edge lateral and larger medial part is the site of prominence that serve as the lateral attachment of the another tank uh, tendon moving on to so here is the orbital aspect of uh, orbital aspect aspect of the right inferior orbital fissure the inferior orbital fissure has long anterior and posterior borders and narrow medial and lateral lines so long posterior and medial borders and narrow uh, narrow lateral and medial lines uh the long posterior edge is formed by the greater wing the long posterior edge is formed by the greater wing as shown here here the long anterior wall is formed by the orbital surface of maxilla except for this uh, short posterior segment formed by the orbital for uh, process of the palatine bone the long anterior wall shown here is formed by the maxilla as shown here the pointer is not visible doctor sir kindly use the pointer yes, while you explain the diagrams here as uh, it is showing the long anterior wall is formed by the orb of the uh, orbital surface of maxilla as shown here pointed upon the uh, maxilla while except for the short posterior segment formed by the process of palatine except for the short posterior segment which is formed by the palatine bone the narrow lateral end is formed by the zygomatic bone narrow uh zygomatic and the narrow medial end is formed by the sphenoid body the posterior medial part of fissure communicates first below the with the pterygopalatine fossa the posterior medial part communicating with the pterygopalatine fossa which and the anterior lateral part communicates with the infratemporal fossa in the it is initially communicating with the pterygopalatine fossa and then later on the anterior lateral part communicates with the infratemporal fossa as shown here the other diagram shows the anterior aspect of right optic canal the and the uh, anomalous optic form the foramen the foramen in the optic strut is referred to is referred to as ophthalmic foramen as shown here 
as shown here, the ophthalmic foramen, the foramen within the optic strut is referred to as ophthalmic foramen. That transmits the ophthalmic uh, that transmits the ophthalmic artery. Moving on to the anterior lateral view of the zygomatic right zygomatic facial foramen. Here the zygomatic facial foramen. So here is the anterior lateral view of zygomatic facial foramen which transmits the zygomatic facial branches of the maxillary nerve. The zygomatic nerve arises from the maxillary nerve in pterygopalatine fossa and which passes through the inferior orbital fissure to course along the lateral wall of wall where it divides into the zygomatic facial and zygomaticotemporal temporal branches. Moving ahead, orbital structures. So in the initial diagram, it is a superior view of uh, neural and uh, neural structures in the orbit and superior orbital fish. In the diagram A, the dura has been removed showing the frontal and sphenoid bone forming the orbital roof. The olfactory bulb, as shown here, rests on the cribriform plate. In the other diagram, the orbit and optic canal has been unroofed. The anterior clinoid process have been removed and the periorbita open to expose the trochlear, frontal and lacrimal nerve coursing in the orbital fat just beneath the periorbiter. So you can see optic, frontal nerve, <clears throat> trochlear, lacry lacrimal nerve. The optic strut have been partially removed that separates the optic canal and the superior orbital fissure. So moving on to the in this diagram uh, shown on the left, the orbital fat has also been removed. The optic nerve divides into lacrimal, frontal, and nasociliary nerves. So here it is shown. The, the optic nerve is being divided into <clears throat> frontal nerve, <clears throat> lacrimal nerve, and the nasociliary nerve ahead. The frontal nerve passes through the superior orbital fissure and courses on the levator muscle, where it divides into supratrochlear nerve, which passes above the superior oblique muscle and the supraorbital nerve. So here you can see the supratrochlear nerve passing upon the <coughs> levator muscle. The lacrimal nerve passes above the lateral lactus muscle to innervate the lacrimal gland and convey the sensations to the area around the lateral part of the lateral part of the supraorbital mark. So as you can see here, the lacrimal nerve passing laterally to the lateral part of orbit to the lacrimal gland to <clears throat> pass the sensation. The trochlear nerve passes medially above the levator muscle to reach the superior orbital, uh, superior orbital, supraorbital, superior oblique muscle. Sorry. So here, as you here, you, as you can see, the trochlear uh, nerve passing towards the superior oblique muscle. The nasociliary branch of ophthalmic nerve passes between the superior rectus muscle and the optic muscle to reach the side of the orbit. In the other diagram, the frontal nerve, uh, the levator, and the superior rectus muscle have been divided 
and reflected. This exposes the superior ophthalmic vein. Here you can see the superior ophthalmic vein. After the both the frontal, the levator, and superior rectal muscles have been divided and reflected. Superior ophthalmic vein pointed by the person. The dual line. <clears throat> This exposes uh, the superior ophthalmic vein, ophthalmic artery, ophthalmic artery, and also the nasociliary nerves as they passes above the optic nerve. So here is the ophthalmic artery, nasociliary nerve, and superior ophthalmic vein. The dural lining in the middle cranial fossa has, has been removed to expose the oculomotor, trochlear, and ophthalmic nerve as they course in the lateral wall of sinus. So here you can see the dural lining after being removed, showing the <clears throat> oculomotorial uptake, trochlear, and trigeminal divisions. The oculomotor nerves passes uh, forward forward in the uh, wall of cavernous sinus between oculomotor sorry trochlear nerve passes forward in the wall of cavernous sinus between the oculomotor and ophthalmic nerve and turns medially at the superior orbital fissure to pass above the <coughs> levator muscle. The superior and inferior divisions of oculomotor nerve, the nasociliary uh, and abducens nerve, passes through the larger part of superior orbital fissure and the annular tendon. Okay, the diagram: <clears throat> the annular tendon has been divided. And then the tendon has been divided in the interval between the origin of superior and lateral rectus. The oculomotor abduction and nasociliary pa nerve passes through. The oculomotor nerve splits into the superior and inferior division. So here you can see superior and the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve. Sorry, here and here. The superior division branches on the lower surface of superior rectus, while and send the branches along the medial border, medial margin of superior rectus muscle to enter the levator muscle, while the fibers of the inferior division give rise, rise to three branches. One passes below. One passes below optic nerve to supply medial rectus muscle, as shown here. The uh, another enters the superior surface of inferior rectus muscle. The third branches courses along the lateral margin of the inferior rectus muscle to in, uh, innervate the inferior oblique muscle. The branch to the inferior oblique muscle gives rise to the motor root to the ciliary ganglion. As shown, as shown here. The motor uh, branch giving rise to the ciliary ganglion motor root. The nasal ciliary nerve arises from the uh, medial surface of ophthalmic nerve and gives rise to the sensory root of ciliary ganglion. So here is the sensory root giving rise to the <coughs> sensory root of ciliary ganglion. A uh, short nerve, ciliary nerve arises from the ciliary ganglion and enters the globe around the optic nerve.
Okay, so in the diagram, Dr. And, Dr. hello, a segment Dr. of Dr. the question. Hello, yes, sir. Please continue. In the diagram F, a segment of orbital portion of optic nerve have been removed. This, this exposes the inferior, uh, branch of inferior division of oculomotor nerve. In the diagram F, uh, division of oculomotor nerve which passes below the nerve and enters the medial rectus muscle. The short ciliary nerve arises from ciliary ganglion and enters the globe around the margin of optic nerve. Ciliary, short ciliary nerve <coughs> arise, uh, so here is the short ciliary nerve which arises from the uh, ciliary ganglion so here you can see it ciliary ganglion giving rise to the short ciliary nerve which passes below the opt optic nerve and enters the medial rectus muscle Moving ahead. Okay. So, moving ahead. Uh, this is the, in the diagram A, the dura covering the mecal scape or the trigeminal ganglion and the cavernous sinus have been removed. The cavernous sinus is located Medial to the uh, medial to the upper third of Vizerian ganglion or the trigeminal ganglion extends down to the lower margin of ophthalmic nerve. So here you can see the <coughs> Vizerian ganglion extending towards the lower margin of ophthalmic vein. The superior ophthalmic vein exits the orbit and passes below the ophthalmic nerve to anterior the anterior part of the cavernous sinus. The superior ophthalmic vein, as shown here, uh, exits the orbit and passes below the ophthalmic nerve to anterior part of the cavernous sinus. The superior petrosal sinus passes above the porous porous part of the uh, mechal cave to join the posterior part of the cavernous sinus. So as shown, superior petrosal sinus passes above the porous of the mechal scape to join the posterior part of cavernous sinus. So here is the superior petrosal uh, sinus, which I had further continues to join the porous part of mechal scape. The superior orbital fissure is filled on its posterior by the posterior side by the cavernous sinus and on its anterior margin by the fat in the orbital apex. So posteriorly it is covered by the uh, cavernous sinus, while on its anterior the, it is covered by the orbital fat. Moving on to diagram B. The anterior clinoid, the lateral wall, and the uh, lateral orbital wall and roof have been removed. The optic strut separates the optic, optic nerve. So here is showing the optic strut, which separates the optic nerve through the superior orbital fissure. Optic nerve in the optic canal form the nerve passing through the superior orbital fissure. So here is the optic strut which separates the op <clears throat> optic nerve in the optic canal from the nerve passing through the superior orbital fissure. Moving on to the superior op orbit, uh, superior ophthalmic vein can be seen through the periorbiter as shown here, the periorbiter In its, uh, it exits the muscle cone to pass along the lateral margin of superior orbital fissure and below the ophthalmic nerve to enter the anterior part of cavernous sinus. So here you can see the superior ophthalmic vein which passes on to
मीडियली so here you can see the trochlear nerve passing medially superior trochlear nerve sorry no The trochlear nerve passes medially above the oculomotor and ophthalmic nerve to reach the superior oblique muscle. So here, the trochlear nerve passing towards the superior oblique muscle. The frontal lacrimal and trochlear nerve passes outside the annular tendon, and the nasociliar abrasion nerve passes through the tendon. The other diagram. The frontal and the lacrimal nerves have been depressed to show the nasociliar nerve arising from the medial side of the oculomotor ophthalmic canal. The oculomotor foramen is the portion of opening in the annular tendon. Annular tendon. Uh, the oculomotor is a portion of in later uh, in the annular tendon lateral to the op uh, optic foramen. From through which the superior and inferior division of the oculomotor nerve and the uh, nasociliary and abducens nerve passes. The oculomotor nerve divided in divides into superior and inferior uh, division just behind the superior orbital fissure. So, uh, this is the superior division <coughs> here showing the uh, oculomotor superior division. The abducens nerve courses on the medial side of ophthalmic nerve in the cavernous sinus, but in the fissure it turns laterally below the nerve to enter the medial side of lateral artery. Abducens nerve. Okay, so here is the enlarged view of oculomotor foramen in the diagram. E showing the enlarged view of oculomotor foramen, while the in the diagram F the annular tendon has been divided between the origin of superior and lateral uh, rectus. The abducens nerve enters the medial aspect of the lateral aspect muscle, uh, lateral rectus muscle. So here you can see the uh, divided annular ring has been divided in between the origin of superior and lateral rectus muscles the abducens nerve enters the medial aspect of lateral rectus muscle the superior division of oculomotor nerve passes upward to the to innervate the levator and superior rectus muscle <clears throat> here is the cranial f3 inferior division cranial f3 to the medial rectus Cranial nerve three superior division, and here is the ciliary ganglion, and here is the inferior division sensory root. Sensory root, uh, nerve root to uh, inferior division to Mm -hmm. 
okay so coming on to uh, periorbital dura and annular tendons so these are the coronal section of orbits and cranial base anterior to the orbital apex <clears throat> In the diagram A, the floor of the orbit faces the maxillary sinus, floor facing the maxillary sinus, and the middle wall faces the ethmoid air cells. The middle wall facing the ethmoid <coughs> air cell sinus. The inferior concha is separated by the bone attached to the middle uh, maxillary uh, middle maxillary wall, the middle terminate and appendage of ethmoid bone attaches to the lateral uh, nasal wall at the level of roof of the maxillary sinus. So here is the inferior concha, while the appendage, middle concha, here of the appendage of the ethmoid sinus, middle concha. Moving on to uh, the diagram B, it's the enlarged view of the right side showing the ophthalm ophthalmic artery that enters the orbit on the lateral side of the ophthalmic nerve. So, ophthalmic artery entering the orbit on the lateral uh, side of the uh, optic nerve. The abducens nerve enters the later, uh, medial surface of the lateral rectus muscle. While the uh, optic the optic nerve is enclosed in optic sheath, the nerve to inferior oblique muscle courses along the lateral edge of inferior rectus muscle. In the other diagram, showing the superior view of both of the orbits, the roof of maxillary sinus, uh, maxillary sinus forms the orbital floors. So in this diagram, the roof of the maxillary sinus is formed by the uh, roof of the uh, both orbits is formed by the maxillary sinus. The zygomatic nerve courses along the lateral wall of, of, of the orbit to give rise to the zygomatic facial and zygomatic temporal nerve. Okay, so here the zygomatic nerve courses along the orbit to give rise to zygomatic facial. Here shown the zygomatic nerve, which uh, courses along the orbit to <coughs> give. Uh, Rise to zygomatico facial and zygomatico temporal nerve. The, the other diagram, as you can see, the zygomatic nerve, which gives rise to the zygomatico facial nerve as it courses along. Dr. Zoeb, how much of your presentation is left? Because we are very short on time. Is there around. Sir, around further 10, uh, 10 of the slides. So I, um, I think uh, we should continue this next week um, because we are, uh, because we've already taken over the time uh, that was assigned. Um, I would request uh, Dr. Mohsen to please uh, give us expert opinions. Obviously, we were not able to finish the presentation. It was unfair to keep this uh, big present topic in one presentation. So we can maybe continue this next week. And um, I would like Dr. Mohsen uh, to please give expert opinions. Um, I'm sorry that we couldn't finish the presentation today. Uh, Dr. Mohsen? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. We can hear Thank you very much, Shad. Uh, I think it, it's actually unfair uh, for Namal to put in such a big topic in one hour. Uh, orbit is a very uh, common uh, pathway for the neurosurgeons these days. Previously, we were very familiar with the superior and lateral aspects of the orbit because of the trauma and the normal uh, approaches that we use uh, in craniotomies, uh, like orbitozygomatic uh, approach or in orbital advancements. But now with the advent of endoscope, there are many new approaches uh, they are coming in. And the new neurosurgeons that are coming up, they should be familiar with the endoscopic anatomy of these orbits as well, which is a totally different ball game. Nowadays, we have expanded nasal, uh, nasal approaches 
which go all the way to the uh, orbit and all the way to the frontal floor. Along with that, we have approaches which are supraorbital or transorbital, which are very useful for minimally invasive medial force approaches. So I think uh, Noman has done a good effort, but I think we need to continue with that. And also uh, endoscopic anatomy uh, is uh, something that we should all be familiar with in the future. Thank you, Dr. Mohsen, for your expert opinions. Since we'll be continuing this next week as well, we'll not be taking any questions right now. We'll all be seeing you next week. And uh, Dr. Uh, Zuhaib will uh, give a brief, a brief uh, overview of what he's already discussed and we'll discuss the remaining uh, portion that is left. Um, I thank you all for joining and thank you, Dr. Mohsen, for joining us uh, for this activity. We'd love to have you in the future. If you can join next week, it will be a pleasure. Um, uh, I thank you all for joining. Um, uh, we'll see you all next week and we'll be discussing the remaining of the orbit. Uh, thank you. Please take care of yourself. Thank you all for joining. Thank you.